Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Season 10 in Shenzhen, China. Look at that, more beautiful high rises and of course lots of rivers. I that wasn't like a high it. rise. There were, yeah, there were. Are you kidding? That wasn't a 600 meter high rise. What? That wasn't a 600 meter set of high rise well, buildings. Uh, okay, but that, it's still it's still a high rise. It's more than that what, like shot five was stories? more of a scenic pond, more than high rise shot. All right, my I bad. like I like my skyscrapers, and that wasn't one. <laughs> All right, my bad. I'll make sure to brush up on my classifications of skyscrapers and how many meters exactly you draw that line, Sean. Just for you, just so I can. I'm sorry, you, Joe. I'm here to... just to make everyone's day <laughs> harder or more fun. It depends on which way you want to look at it. Uh, I can go both ways at the same time. I appreciate it. I don't have to do anything this time. I mean, I just turn up and cast. You know, <laughs> so I'm just like having fun and making jokes and easy life, man. Easy life. Why, did you, ever, I... why did you ever leave this lifestyle? I know, like, sure, right? I just now want you're... to be like autosis and I mean, this, down. After you tried it once, you was like, I can't do it anymore. I'll leave it to Trevor. He's now out here just yep. goofing around, making my life harder. I see how it is. It's all right. I'm it's here because to I had to host and I had people like in control making my life so very difficult. <laughs> and I'm on the other side. I'm like, that's not a city. That's a village. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair point. It did look a little bit more like a village. Uh, but Pig, nice to, have, nice to have you here, too. I'm really glad you're here at the very least. Oh, Hopefully, it's, uh, it's oh, great. Thanks, I can add some professionalism to the banter desk. It's you've got cool, your you know? tie on. You've got yeah. your white shirt on. Yeah. yeah. You've got your tie ready. I'm very happy to see that because we are ready to go into a little bit more serious business, Sean. It's time to look at the favorites. Me. The yeah. favorites here. Yeah. <laughs> we got to make sure you're in line. We are ready to talk about, I mean, some, I mean, more than one favorite here in Group B. We have two, probably, you would say, for the whole tournament in Group B in the names, of course, Rain, who we're about to see on the main stage. And then we have Classic uh, also in Group B. And then I think for a lot of guys who are watching, you know, maybe in the wee hours over in Europe, of course, Snoot. Uh, you know, it, it's looking a little bit tough. But his, I mean, there's a lot of hopes riding on him. I mean, there's a lot of hopes running on him, but let's, let's all be honest here. It feels like the StarCraft gods have looked down upon our community and said, <laughs> it's time to offer one of the best Europeans to the Koreans. <laughs> and they've put him on a platter where he's in a group where he's not meant to make it out. Like, and then it's, he it's just, that simple. But then if he rises out, it's just like the biggest, <laughs> the biggest rebellion against the starcraft gods is that it's, what's it's, gonna happen yeah it'd be like a it'd be like a christian story you know where the koreans in this in this particular uh -oh. weird story uh oh, uh -oh. are we sure we want to go kill the snoot details? but snoot oh is like jesus God. and returns to life because i actually believe despite a lot of people not thinking this i think he's gonna go through chobra <laughs> You know, just because... Just Probably because the worst Pig, example I could have gave. Yeah, but just because Pig was talking about the I like a looking like I'm sorry. War one does not mean we have to go deeper into there. But uh, I did want to update you guys, of course. Uh, Classic already played it that first match in Group B offstage, taking Yonghua down 2-0. So he moves on to the winner's match. Uh, Yonghua will be waiting down there in the elimination match to find out who he gets to play between Snoot versus Rain. So do you think it's going to be Snoot or do you think it's going to be Rain? I think Snoot there? can get out in second place okay. with an upset over Classic. Ooh. Wait, okay. Okay, so I see how that works out. I, I, I think, think Rain's going through in first place right, no matter okay, what. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think he I can squeeze out versus moment. Classic. <laughs> yeah, I was like looking at Snoot going on to the winner's match. I was like, wait, that doesn't work out. But I got you. I, 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 I got to zip quiet, man. I don't think you said anything <laughs> while being up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pig's just lost it at this place. I'm like, just, these I'm two just chilling, balls. man. I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy that stands next to Apollo. You know, I can straighten your shirt a little bit every now and then. I feel for you. Maybe it's talk about how Classic can take Rain down. He looks like the guy my parents wanted me to look like, and I turned out like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they're not watching the stream now then, because this is a pretty distinct <laughs> comparison with you two standing right there. But let's talk about the match coming up on stage. We talked yep. briefly about Classic, of course. We'll yep. get to see him later on in the winner's match. But who's going to go up against him? Rain versus Snoot. Now, Rain, I mean, we talked about him even in Group A when we looked at the whole round of 16. He is looking super strong right now. Overall, I mean, worldwide, I think everyone agrees. He's so scary. Like, uh, you know, playing against a guy like Rain is so hard. But, of course, he's going to be going up against Snoot. And really, Snoot's been having a hard time this year. Like, yeah. he was so good last year, so close to getting to BlizzCon. He's been the foreign hope for a while. He's been that guy who can go into a stacked tournament, yeah. kill so many of the top players, but 
He's been having a tough time lately. The Swarm Moose got taken away, and this matchup specifically, he has been very vocal about his issues with it. Yeah, I mean, he started the year pretty good, and he definitely was a contender to play BlizzCon. And it's something we haven't yeah. really talked about with the players that are here. But he just dropped off mid-year mid, mid -year here, season two. He couldn't qualify for top 16 in WCS. He yeah. started losing a lot. Obviously, as you've mentioned, is the, the change with the Swarm Moose affected his Zerg versus Protoss heavily. Like, he dropped 20% in win rate, which is massive. That's pretty That's huge. That's like, it's a massive drop, and he's still suffering, and he hasn't quite recovered and found his way. But the one advantage he does have coming into this tournament is that he has been in Korea over the last week or so, week and a half. It's not a big yeah. advantage, but it's an advantage nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you adjust kind of culturally. Climates were fairly similar and what now you're playing against some of those guys in Korea. Of course, Rain, kind of the highlight in Korea right now and worldwide. I mean, he's had quite a few recent back-to-back uh, -back championships under his belt and quite a few before that in the past. Yeah. And still looking strong. Rain had a bit of a weird period in his career where he started to drop down a little bit and everyone was like, what happened to Rain? Yeah. But then he like went straight back to the top, and he's on top of the world again. It's, it's great to see him up there. It's kind of funny because he himself would make jokes like, "Oh, I'm one of the washed-up guys." Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and SOS, we haven't won a championship. And if you actually look at his results, you're you're looking through that period. There's still like a top eight GSL, you know, multiple top 16s. He's got a top four, and you're like, "Really? This is when you're washed up?" Like that's <laughs> yeah. the caliber of player that Rain is. Like he's like, oh, "Didn't win anything for the last few months. I'm really bad well, now." That's what happens when you live in. Korea, because everyone only remembers number one. <laughs> so yeah. You suddenly become a memory in everyone's brain. But that's not the case right now. He does have those back-to-back -back championships coming in. Of course, recently also at home Story Cup. And then now he's here looking to try to take that win, secure a spot in the championships of the Intel Stream Masters in Katowice next year. So it will be Snoot uh, versus Rain going in here, match number two of Group B. And to bring us awesome game, finally they get to just geek out over all these protosses. It's going to be Rotter damn anartosis. The Strace, Roddy, we get to watch it. I can't wait. If these guys have equal skill as TY, they should be taking down the tournament. Absolutely. I think two worlds are going to collide on Coda for our first Protoss of the day. It's going to be an awesome series. Our very own Jens Snoot, who had such a great run in the Extreme Masters Season 9. Not at one stop, not at two stops, so but at multiple snops. Snoot, uh, Snoot went so deep. I said snops instead of stops. It's kind of like a mix between stops and Snoot. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Anyways, I'm super curious to see if Snoot can go all the way once more. You know, he had so many great performances in Season 9. And is he going to be able to continue that trend? Like Pig said, it's been a rough year for him. But, well, he's over here. Artie Mactosis in the right mm. bottom side of Coda, representing Team Liquid. It is Snoot. Indeed, a fantastic European player, Roddy Mactosis. <laughs> and his opponent, of course. I, I, it would take me too long to say everything he's done. In the top left, our Protoss player. It is Rain. Of course, on my insanity nowadays, what a great pickup. The champion of GSL Code S, the champion of Home Story Cup 11, I believe it was. Yeah, I mean, this correct. guy is so unstoppable right now. I have to ask you, Roddy, is this guy the best player in the world? Uh, I think it's always hard to just say single-handedly that he's the best player in the world. Like, you know, if you put him right now in a group with Life and Dream and Maru, am I sure that he's going to crush it? No, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, you're about not sure of that? No, not sure of it. I mean, he just crushed Biol, and he just crushed like yeah, but Bjol in a row, is including not... Maru, right? So that's two yeah, of them. I know, but that was a rough series between uh, Rain and Maru, right? Like it was a close call. I mean, like he Rain won. is. I mean, I've been the biggest fan of Rain for like, you know, three years by now, and I've been a big fanboy. I think a, a lot of people know that. Yeah. So, yeah, he. I definitely put him up there. But is he the absolute undisputed best player in the world? Like that's you know, it's up for discussion. Okay, so here's here's my next question, right? Alrighty. He just won GSL Code S. Yes. He just won Home Story Cup. Mm -hmm. Now he's in I Am Shenzhen. If he wins this tournament, can we call him the Zerg Banjo? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Just checking, just checking. I was like, where is he going to go with this? Can we call him the best protos in the world? And then he's just like, no. Can we call him the Zerg? I was like, <laughs> okay, Artie Mentosis. Well, right. interesting opening, by the way, as he went for the pilot on the low ground, followed with the gate on the low ground as yeah. well. This is like, uh, if you can get early port, I think this is kind of hard to defend as Protoss, because you will be forced to pull a lot of probes mm. very far away from your mineral lines. And if your gateway gets on power, then often the shrekening will occur. And Indeed. It's not pleasant. You can't lose that, uh, that pylon, but it's like kind of the more greedy version of gateway on top of your ramp that everyone was liking, so... 
know, he's just kind of pushing it forward. It's been a little bit popular in Korea recently. As is well. it? I think the other version is more greedy, though, because now your like uh, probe has to go to the ramp as well to build all the buildings there. Well, if you build it and you send your main base, there's like less travel for your probe to do. Your wall is just a lot later, but I think. Okay, I see what you're yeah. saying about that, but it's it's. Yeah. I think Nexus right. first on the low ground into gate in your main is the most greedy way that Protoss could possibly play. Well, gate in the main, not at the ramp, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Imarish, of course, is going to be the follow-up now. Uh, they already mentioned it a little bit at the desk. Snoot has not been too happy with uh, ZVP. He's been struggling a little bit in the matchup. And for the people who don't watch StarCraft 24-7, it's like, well, I thought Snoot was really good against Protoss. He was for a while, but then there was this sudden change to this unit called the Swarm Host. And right now, I think it's safe to say that it became a little less popular in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And it has hurt the win rates of many Zerg players out there, including Snoot. Indeed. And, uh, you know, Snoot really known for kind of relying on the Storm host. This is one thing I was really wondering about when they announced what the changes would actually be, is could Snoot keep up? And the thing is, here he is. He went through the European qualifier. He's definitely yeah. still a top European. But I'm not looking at him in the same way as, let's say, that last Toronto I am, right, where he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with CJ here. I don't think he's going to do that here. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, and I think in Intel Extreme Masters San Jose as well, where he was also up 2-0 against CJ Hero, and then Hero came back, still won the series 3-2, still ended up winning that tournament as well. As that completed the trivia that Apollo was on before. I do agree with you, but I always want to believe in Snoot as well. He's just one of these guys He's so likable to cheer for, you know? You just want Snoot to do well. And in a weird way, whenever Snoot does well, it's like, yeah, I did really well this tournament. And, <laughs> you know, my performance has absolutely nothing to do with Snoot's performance. <laughs> but it just kind of feels like that. Yeah. It's an interesting build over here by Rain as he opens up with three gates, a very, very conservative, and a very late Stargate. Now, I would never question my Protoss hero, Rain himself, but I'm not actually a huge fan of these kind of builds. I just feel like it's so late for any target unit to arrive. Uh, but I guess this is just like Rain being like, hey, I am so incredibly good at this game. Yeah. If nothing crazy happens, I'm going to win it. And I guess that's that, just the way he's approaching this. That is Rain really in a nutshell, Roddy, I have to say. Like, this guy, he just wants to play safe. He realizes, okay, you know what? If I go in this order, I can't die. Mm. Look at all these Zerglings that are being made. If he had gone Stargate into the gates, this would be a little bit harder to hold, I think. But in this case, I don't think that these Zerglings will do anything at all well, to well, him. I mean, I think Rain got a little bit unfortunate with his scouting guy. I think he's going to warp in his Nexus and he's going to end up losing it immediately. Ah, That's yes. kind of nice. Lose the pilot as well. Snoot should be able to get the probe. One more pilot. Come on, Snoot. Don't let it go up too late. He pretty much has to go for it right here, right now. I think this is absolutely perfect timing for Snoot. He's done his homework. Yeah, that's, wow. that worked out perfectly there. Having to cancel two pylons as well as that Nexus losing the probe ball. So that's really going to slow Rain down, but he already has his three gates. So it won't be too long before he can yeah. get that Nexus up. True, uh, but I mean, Snoot can try to do it all over again. He's going to drop a little bit of creep as well. I'm loving this. Sentries were coming out, trying to take care of that overload, but now the sentries are caught up. He picks up the probe again, and as a Protoss, there's nothing more annoying than a bunch of links running around, sniping the probe that's supposed to drop the Nexus over and over again. Indeed, that is the case, but in the meantime, we do have a counterattack here, a counter harassment at least, with this Oracle. Already four drones going down. A little bit of miss, Micro there. Definitely could have gotten one or two more, but yeah. still, four drones, not too bad. Not too bad, but it also could have been a lot worse for Snooter. When you don't have a Spore Crawler up and you only have a single Queen, I've seen, uh, you know, instances even at very high level StarCraft. I'm not talking about my own horrific ladder games over here, where those Oracles get like nine or ten uh, <laughs> drone kills. So, not too bad for Snooter. I think he's quite all right with it. Yeah, I, I would say so. Well enough defended so far. Uh, he is going for quite a few Hydras at the moment. In the meantime, some more drones being picked off here. So, you know, trading that out for, for eight workers, not too, too bad. But right now we do have Rain starting that third Nexus again, going into Blink, getting his attack upgrades as well. So uh, he's just going to have to make sure he has enough units here for any Hydraling attacks that may be coming. Yeah, Snoot is on 49 drones, so this is basically an all-in. And I know it's weird to call it an all-in because he's like, he's in three Hydras, uh, three hatcheries, right? But if these Hydras do not take care of all of these sentries and do not take care of this Nexus, if a Protoss is on the same amount of bases as the Zerg player, Ooh. and you're on a bunch of workers as well, that's really good. But I love this engagement, I think, by Snoot. A couple of Hydras are still participating in this battle. This was a really good engagement that for was, Snoot. That was fantastic. Oh my god, he's Rain getting all the right into that. He loses absolutely everything. And 
Dude, Snoot is gonna yeah. take this game. He should. I mean, it's 62 armies fly against 14. Like, Rain is a god amongst Frodo's men, but 62 armies fly against 14. I have no idea how he's supposed to save this. He's supposed to, I think he has to cancel this Nexus, give up on the gateway in the pylons, and just go to go back to being a two-base Frodo. Yeah, well, he already lost his sentry, so even if he does that, I, I see so few ways out of this. He's trying to micro right now, gonna have to cancel that Nexus. He oh. does indeed. But I mean, I think the only thing left for him here is a two base blink plus two all in. That's that's it. And Snoop should be able to defend it knowing that's all he can do. And I mean, this all started with the Zerglings taking care of those destructible rocks, right? He took care of those rocks and Rangers did not expect Lynx mm -hmm. to arrive from that uh, position. Normally you're safe with your sentries there because you just drop a couple of voices on the ramp like he tried to zone out the Hydras as these Stalkers are going to get picked off as well. Snoot all over game one. Did he play risky? Yeah, a little bit. Made a lot of Lynx early on, made a big follow-up with the Lynx Hydra. But was it well executed? Hell yeah. Oh, certainly it was. I, I love how you point out taking down those rocks with the Lings really caught Rain off guard. And I think that's what you need to beat Rain. You know, this guy definitely a contender for best player in the world at the moment. You have to mix some stuff like that in. So very smart, very excellent play from Snoot here in this first game. Yep. I mean, Rain is going to try to hang in there a little bit longer. He has 1,400 minerals, and nobody wants to tap out of a tournament game with 1,400 minerals. <laughs> and, you know, in all honesty, I've seen Rain win. Uh, a 25 minute game on two bases just the other day against uh, Saxby at the Homestory oh, Cup yes. final. <laughs> now, that was Dash Terminal, and that was actually kind of planned all along, even though it wasn't planned to go on for that long. You know, he was kind of setting himself up for a two base attack, and this is, of course, a completely different game. But as long as Rain has money, he's not going to go away from this game. He's going to try to just do the same thing all over again. It's not a yeah. comfortable position, but, you know. Yeah, I, I see that he's deciding to take this third Nexus and go for plus three attack, which I think is fine because, the like, attacking off two base now, you're never going to kill him. Mm. Maybe Snoop doesn't tech up. Maybe he just keeps attacking with layer tech and, and Rain can pull off a victory there. But as we see on that production tab, Hive is on the way. Yeah. And I, I mean, as those Hive tech units come out, as he gets a couple of Vipers and whatnot, it's going to be so difficult for Rain to hold on. I mean, that should truly be all that Snoot needs. A couple of blinding clouds just to make sure that you just can't sit behind the force fields forever. And then a single guardian shield and a couple of force fields won't keep your Proto's army safe. Uh, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about for Snoot is that he's definitely uh, lacking or slacking in the upgrade department. Plus one missile attacks is about to finish up. But, you know, look at Rain. Plus three is halfway done. Uh, and then sometimes army supply taps can be a little bit deceiving. Well, uh, let's see what what Rain can do here as far as the defense goes. I like how he's starting out in the middle. He needs as much room as possible to be able to run backwards from those uh, blinding clouds. And we do have Snoop starting to move forward now. He does have a lot of force fields to use, so he puts down a nice line right there. The wings coming in from another side, a flank coming in from Snoop. But so far, so good for Rain. Some good defense. Yeah, didn't really lose a whole lot yet. He's down 50 army supply, but plus three is finishing up. So we're looking at a lot of force fields and plus three Blink stock soon. He's warping in a couple of Zealots, and I don't really like that. I know they help out a little bit against the Lynx, but I kind of feel like a Zealot is the last unit you ever mm. want to make against an army that mostly relies on Roach Hydra. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, he th I guess he just needs to make whatever he can yeah. afford at this point. And here we go. Looks like Snoop will attack in once again. Some good force fields going down. Not too much damage dealt to Rain quite yet. Good blinding cloud goes down. But you know what? The oh. force fields are good enough that Rain is holding once again. Yeah, I really love the whole position there by Rain. He makes that look so easy, but it's actually not all that easy. But if you just attack move, then your stalkers will derp and they will keep running into mm. this Roach Hydra force of Snoot. So how many forces do we have left? Maybe four or five. There isn't really mm. all that much more. But Rain is just landing squeeze the right amount of units through so he can pick them up very easily and it still hurts Snoot. As Snoot is actually forced to disengage right here. Yeah, look at that. The supply is wow. getting a lot more even at this point. Uh, we do have most of the sentries dead, so that is a big part of this game to, to look at. We might have Rain do something like make a whole lot of stalkers and go at this point, but no. Starting to pull back and make a robo. Snoop doesn't have a fourth hatchery, and this really bothers me because I feel like he could have squeezed it in quite a while ago. I really feel like he needs that seven and eight gas, uh, especially now he's starting making vipers as well. He's still trying to get upgrades going from double evolution chamber even, but he's so low in the gas department over and over again, and I feel that that forces him to make units like Zerklings and maybe a few more roaches than he would have really liked to. Mm, well, let's see here. Yeah, he's getting it now, but... 
I'm worried, man. Uh, it really felt like this was almost a default win for Snoot. 62 yeah. army supply against 15 it was in a certain phase in the game. Uh, but now suddenly things are starting to look quite all right for yeah. the reigning GSL and Homestoric champ. Reigning, I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, Rain, he's just showing his ridiculous power here. The fact that he is still alive and in fact starting to push across the map a bit. But Snoop coming up with what could be a flank. No? Looks like he does draw back for now. Rain really on top of his positioning here. Yeah, so good with that uh, hold, uh, with that, yeah, well, how do you say, the whole position micro that Rain was showing us a little bit before. It looks so silly because it looks very easy, but whenever I do it, like, either none of my army fights or everything starts <laughs> fighting again, and they just keep derping, and I get really mad at myself. Uh, Stun is going to try his luck one more time over here. has plus two this time, so his Hydra is doing slightly more damage. I kind of like the Blinding Clouds, and this time a lot more Hydras are fighting, though. Yeah, well, he does blink forward there into the Hydra list, but those Blinding Clouds over yeah. on the left doing a great job right now. And despite very nice force fields, Snoot is killing off a lot of units here. The sentries all wow. starting to fall, but more Stalkers are blinked in. Looks like Rain should live once again. It's a much, much better fight for Snoot, though. I do think, indeed, that Rain is going to live, even though reinforcements are arriving for Snoot a couple circlings a lot of these stalkers are starting to run really low on hp but i do think rain is indeed gonna survive to fight another day but this was a much better fight for snoot than the previous one. Oh, certainly and i think that this is the point where snoot just continually making units is going to be very tough for rain he can't just keep re-adding sentries at this point he's made a no. lot of stalkers he's got good upgrades he's got great micro but is that going to be enough to push across creep against the snoot with a lot of speedlings a lot of hydras some vipers and he's even making an infester the accidental infester or oh that's i think it's on purpose i love you put a blinding cloud down and a, a fungal yeah. you know how silly that is no of course it's a great combination and snoot is actually very good in using both those spell casters at the same time i've casted some ridiculous game where he was playing with just queens infestors and Vipers against Terrans, and he's doing it very well. <laughs> what I really like the most is that that fourth hatchery is really starting to matter so much more now. A couple of uh, sentries have been warped in again, but even if they use all their energy now, you warp them in and they only have 50 energy. We're not looking at sentries anymore that have 200 energy, and he just forced Rain to use quite a few of those force fields already. So I think the next attack, you know, all those sentries, I'm not going to say that they're useless, but they're not going to be able to contribute a whole lot to the battle. Yeah, they aren't useless, but they're not too useful either. Uh, we'll see. It looks like he's going to start with his stalkers. Oh, those vipers get away just in the nick of time here. Now he is backing up, losing a few stalkers on the way. We're going to have to see his force fields come down in a matter of seconds. There they are, but the hydras pushing through a little bit. Those zealots coming up, they will be erased in a matter of seconds. And once again, all the sentries going to fall. A ridiculous amount of sentries have died throughout the entirety of this game. I actually don't even know how many sentries have died. It's just too much gas. Snoot again knocking on the wall of Rain. Rain, of course, his main base is completely mined out, and even his natural is starting to run really, really dry because he was over mining of that base for a while uh, when he couldn't take his third base yet. So Snoot, you know, it started to look very dicey a couple minutes ago, but that last fight really swung things in his favor again. It certainly did, and he is pushing now on two fronts right now. The probes are being pulled. Pulling back off the probes and no. the stalkers. It looks like the rest of the Hydra is going to come down. Oh, this no. should be the... I mean, this should be the final battle, right? I don't think Rain can really hold on any longer. There is your fungal. That's the GG fungal, the money fungal, like in the old days, Hardy McDosis. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> oh, beautiful it was. <laughs> so many stalkers falling down. Ling's coming in, reinforcements from all over the map on Snoo. And Rain just, he doesn't have any gas left. Not yeah. any minerals left either. And the cannons are on power as well in his third base. GG is called. Snoot wins game number one against the reigning GSL and Home Story Cup champ. Wasn't easy, because uh, I kind of felt that Snoot probably thought he had this game in the bag, and then at a certain point, he's probably started shaking his head. He's like, yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Why am I losing this game? Seriously, how did Rain really start fighting yeah. back there? Just perfect positioning, as you said, that whole position micro. Really hard to actually pull off yeah. in the heat of battle, but he did so perfectly. Uh, but you know what? That's a win. And if Snoot can pull one more out, and there's a lot of different various strategies he could use to try to do that, then Rain would get knocked down into a very hard loser bracket. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be PvP. It's going to be madness. Yongwa is waiting for uh, the loser of this series in the lower bracket match over here. Group B at the Intox Stream Masters, Shenzhen. Obviously, you know, it's, it's no man overboard yet for Rain. 
Um, I believe that he was losing the first game against Snoot as well, the home story call, but then he bounced back and he did and he did actually knock Ray, uh, Snoot out 2 to nothing in that lower bracket match that they played back then. Either way, we're going to head over to a very short break and after that we'll be back with game number two between Liquid Snoot and My Insanity's Reign. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Season 10 opener in beautiful Shenzhen, China. We are having a great time so far, Roddy, on the first day of broadcasting, the first day of groups. We finished up Group A, having TY and Mosira move through to the bracket. And now we have Snoot, kind of with that upset game, over Rain, the reigning champion of Home Story Cup and GSL Codes. I mean, I am has kind of always been Snoot's playground. He's never mm. won one, but he came so close and he had so many good runs and he had so many ridiculously amazing victories over players that we really didn't thought he was able to beat. Uh, would be awesome for Snoot to just, you know, have another great run over here. He's been staying in Korea a little bit. He's been practicing in Korea, living yeah. with Jinro. Yeah, yeah, and I think he was with, uh, like, the MVP team for a few days as mm -hmm. well. So, I mean, that's some legit practice playing in that Korean server at all. So, uh, hopefully he's learned some new tricks from it, especially against Protoss. We did see some strong play in that last game. And yeah, the timings were just great. Impeccable timings, honestly. Well, it looks like we're getting into game number two up here in the top right. Stealing that game number one from Rain. Some great play. It is Liquid Snoot. And over here in the left bottom side of Iron Fortress, a man who perhaps almost forgot what losing felt like, <laughs> but he's down 0-1 in this series. It is Rain. Of course, representing my insanity. Indeed, a great a, pickup for them. He's a really funny guy. Whenever I see Rain, you know, ever since he won GZO, every single time I greet him, I was like, hi, champ. And then he always laughs kind of shy <laughs> at me. He's like, hello, hello. <laughs> this guy has uh, quite a few titles under his belt nowadays. I think he's going to get more and more, especially since my insanity is helping him to fly around the world and, and hit a lot more of these tournaments. Yeah, he has never won an Intel Extreme Masters. Game so close last year oh, yeah. in uh, San Jose. I played a phenomenal final against Hero, but in the end it wasn't enough. But he played very good and it was a very fun journey. And I think, you know, if Rain actually makes it to four or five IEMs this year, I can't imagine him not winning one. Yeah, of course. I, I have to totally agree with you. He's in as good of shape as he's ever been in. Mm -hmm. And he's, this is a guy that like every Protoss has to study. Yeah, you just have to. Like he, he is required reading for Protoss because he is one of the guys that really figures out the ins and outs of the metagame, the ins and outs of build orders, and the right way, quote unquote, to play the race. You know, it's really funny because Rain has been my favorite Protoss player to watch for a couple of years now already. But I play completely different than him because I just can't do yeah. what he does. It's yeah. just like I look at it and I know it all makes sense and I admire it. And then at the same time, I'm just like, I'm not even going to try, Rain. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've basically modeled all of my play off of him. Uh, <laughs> he's been just fantastic. I mean, yeah, he had that little downturn for a little mm -hmm. bit where we're all like, okay, CJ Hero is the best Protoss right now. But Rain come back strong. I would actually love to see those two hit each other. Yeah, here. revenge mess, man. Yeah. I am San Jose rematch. Cool opening over here by Rainey when Nexus Pros on the low ground into Gateway in his main. That's kind of the opening I mentioned before on Coda. Mm -hmm. Like I think this is the absolute greediest version of Protoss. Uh, oh, he, yes. he didn't even <laughs> scout as well. Like he's scouting now, but it was pretty damn late. You know, Rain is that type of guy that can walks up to girls in a bar and say, I too like to live dangerously. <laughs> I go Nexus first, no scout on Iron Fortress. What you think about that, baby girl? You know what? It sounds to me like he's been stud studying Roddy builds here, <laughs> to be honest. It's not the other way around. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this is as greedy as a build you ever see. It's actually very rare to, to see a build quite this greedy, but I think he's uh, kind of chosen his build wisely for this map. What are the odds for Snoot to go six pool here? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you get a player like Lucera might wear something like that, but Snoot maybe not as much. I mean, Iron Fortress is a tricky map as Protoss. No matter yeah. if you're Rain or not, this is not the most Protoss-friendly map out there. I'm not talking about that massive Zerg logo in the middle of the map. I'm more <laughs> just talking about how difficult it is to go up to three bases at Protoss. Yes, you know, every Protoss right now loves the Sentry Blink Stalker style. And I'm not saying it's awful on this map, but it's not great. You know, there will most of the time there will be a moment where Zerg players can find your Sentries exposed when they're in transit between your natural and your third base. Do you think there's any... Oh, I was just going to say, do you think there's any chance he'll mix in a, a cheese here because it is Iron Fortress? But before I could, the Robo came down. 
and that is not for an immortal third base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be uh, maybe a quick war prism with some four gate arrest and then saving immortals up at home and then yeah. following it up with a second wave of uh, basically a lot of stalkers. Could be blink as well, still on two bases. Then it's going to hit a little bit later, but also a lot harder. Oh, this could be a massive scout. Oh, Little man. Zergling. Oh, man. Rain letting that Zergling in. That's actually a giant deal. The fact that he has seen that Robo this early yep. means that Rain could switch this up in any which way. Like, he actually could go take a third now because of that. Mm -hmm. Normally, as a Brothers player, you don't have a robotic facility finishing up at the six-minute mark. That is a that is a massive commitment that we do have that War Prism as the start. That's kind of what I expected. Mm -hmm. It's it's a really good way to slow the Zerg down and force out some units early on. Maybe if you can get lucky, you can get a couple uh, queens here and there. I actually have a buddy from Denmark, um, and he's been doing this build a lot. And I think he said he copied it from either Classic or someone else. Uh, but it's basically just, you be annoying with your Prism, while at home, you try to go up to Blink Stalkers and a couple of Immortals. So now you keep the Zerg busy and then you march across the map with a very strong army. Mm. Well, he's picking up. Oh, that's an interesting little cargo payload right there. A couple centuries of Stalker and a probe. Well, you know, it's what he has. The, the probe is really weird. Is he going to drop the probe on the left top side of the map for a hidden base? I would love that. That would be really cool. You know, you get your uh, Robo what? scouted. Why not? Oh! Man, what a guy! Oh, Dark Shrine. I love it. Of course, Dark Shrine, one of those buildings that you just don't need power. So. <laughs> that is really sick. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I'm I... liking it. Because that, that is something that just won't get scouted. There's no way you're going to scout that. Of course, for those of you that are looking at Confuse, turn the Warp Prism into the powering phase, Sh whatever shift we call mode? it. Phase shift, phase shift, whatever it's called. <laughs> one Blue the... disc underneath can't move yeah. and warp in Zealot's mode, and then you drop your probe and do that. But that's a really clever move there. So we'll yeah. see if that ends up working out. Nice uh, nice drop off there. Nice warp is trapping the queen with one force field. And uh, this is already a pretty decent harassment. It has to be careful with the warp prism, though. You don't want to take too much damage on your warp Ooh. prism. Oh, oh my god, it's so close. Playing with fire. Yeah, seriously, if he had lost that warp prism, suddenly this is such a worse build. Yep. <laughs> you need to have that. But he's taken so much damage, he has to be very careful with it from now on. He's going up to three bases, and that's kind of cool. Uh, Snoot has absolutely no detection on the map, by the way. There's not a single spore crawl. Well, actually, no, there are three spore crawls down. Snoot has a spore in every base. Wow. What a guy. Well, that's uh, that's actually pretty impressive. But maybe he's throwing that down, giving a nod towards the fact that he scouted this tech and the Immortal Push is much less likely behind that. So uh, a smart move, nonetheless. He's going to be very pleased with that. Of course, if three Dark Templars run into that Spore Crawler, there's still a chance that he, they can take out the Spore. And then Stunis is going to end up losing a lot of links mm -hmm. and Hydras. Uh, Stun is committing to his counterattack on the other side of the map. And this is a very unfortunate moment, because here come those DTs. And that Spore Crawler is indeed going to go down almost well. No, uh -oh. Transfuse. Yeah, Transfuse again. Uh, that's a lot of Transfuse, just keeping them attacking that for a while. It gives more time for his Overseer. But at the meantime, we do have a counterattack there. It forces a cancel on the wow. third base of Ray. Very nicely done by Snoot. Yeah, Rain with a lot of money right now in the bank. That's not a very comfortable position to be in. Snoot kills both Dark Templars. In the end, I think he only ended up losing two Queens there. Didn't really end up losing a whole lot of drones. There were no Dark Templars in other places either. Man, Snoot is playing so well so far. He is. He's got a lot of great moves. He's doing great on his scouting, on his counters. I mean, even his predictions to have yeah. a Spore in each base. Are you kidding me? If he didn't have a Spore there, he loses the hatchery. Yeah. He loses the game. He's going to lose a bunch of drones. It's absolutely mm. game over. Uh, Zergling's looking for an opening, not going to get one yet. This is definitely, you know, not game over by any means. I mean, Rain is still up eight workers, and that is great. It is just very frustrating that he's sitting on 60 pros split over two bases. Yeah. That is pretty rough. He has a lot of energy on these sentries, so he might be all right for a little while here, but a lot of units still being created by Snoot. He's going to be rallying those across the map as well. Oh, and, oh, oh. Links. Well, just a couple. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's going to lose two sentries from that, which is pretty nice. More and more Ling's going to be able to get in here now that they've killed off that pylon. Oh, Coming what from a behind. Support. And he, he should be able to kill all this off now. Well, this is going to be annoying, man. He mm -hmm. lost the Munition Core as well. He needs a couple of Zealots or Dark Templars in his main base before he ends up losing too many probes there. In the end, indeed, he will clean it up. But I think this was all right for Snoot. I think he's really slowing Rain down a lot over here. Yeah. He has killed a couple of sentries. He killed the Munition Core. That's a lot of gas. He's getting more and more probes. He's interrupting all this mining time. Snoot is making plays. Well, right, that's what he needs to make to be you know, the champion of GSL right here. So 
Uh, continued to do a fantastic job. Rain coming back to mine once again. Sentry, that's another one. A cheeky one. If these Hydras can take care of these cannons, that would be really nice. Mm. It's a little bit soft to do that right now, but more and more units coming in right now. Oh. These gates not even powered at the yeah. moment. He doesn't really have the firepower to bust out against this. You know, you, you walk out there, you're going to lose quite a few centuries, I think. Yeah, Rain basically only on five gateways right now. He's going to warp in three more gates in his main, but five gates, that's not a whole lot of production. He's still up and working. Look at the Zergle, he's getting Man. the wraparound. There's no Mothership Core, there's no Photon Overcharge. Well, the Zealots are actually going to help out a lot over here, but I like how this is going very much for Snoot. Yeah, Snoot is looking like he's going to just take this game, Rotterdam. I mean, this is, it looks pretty fantastic for him right now. Rain is going to have a hard time fighting back. Right now, as far as units goes, yeah, he still has four sentries. He's making a bunch of gates, so if he gets to spend his money, he might have a shot, but Snoot has a pretty strong lead. Yeah, and Rain has zero, zero probes in the third base. Some people may just tune in and be like, well, he's on three bases, and Snoot has, like, no economy, but Rain has no workers in the third base. The Mothership course is oh. going to go down again immediately. All the sentries are going to go down as well. There's nothing left but a bunch of stalkers. I know this is just the first series in this group, but what a wow. massive victory for Snoot. That is pretty sick, man. 2 owing rain who just knocked him out of Boom Story Cup 11. That is a big deal. That is a big, big deal. And to be in that winner's match, I mean, rain right now has to be like, oh my god, I have. He has to go through like either Snoot again or yeah. PVPs from some of the best Protoss in the world. And that is that is a tough road for that man. Yeah, man, I'm very impressed with the way that Snoot played. Having the sports up over here as well, he never spotted the Dark Shrine. He had no idea if that was a possibility. Maybe he was scared that those Oracles did slightly more than they should have done, you know, in the previous mm -hmm. game. And he's like, ah, you know what, I'll just get up a Spore. But, you know, what a great call and just great play, never-ending pressure. And I think game number one, it felt so good for Snoot to win it, because he almost won it already in the start. And then suddenly that game got a lot closer than it ever should have yeah. been. But then still closing it out in the end. That's such a roller coaster of emotions, but it feels so good in the end, because you're like, I know I was supposed to win this game, and now at least I still did. Indeed. Well, we do have Snoot at the desk, so uh, guys, let's, let's hear how he's feeling. We will indeed. Welcome back to the desk, everyone. Congratulations, Snoot. You are now a GSL champion. How does it feel to be at the top of the world? Hey, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, go on. It's go on. okay, I guess. Oh, it's, yeah, you know, no big deal. It's just all right. It's yeah, all right what, being the best. That's what he did when he came on. He's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. He's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> going going 2 0 against Rain. I mean, Rain is some uh, one of the players that everyone's been talking about coming into the Intel Stream Masters. They're saying, well, GSL champion, home Street Cup. He looks like he's at the best he's been in the last couple of years. He was calling her like 2-0, no problem, winner's match against Classic. Uh, I mean, were you worried at all, especially after that first map? I mean, the first map seemed to feel pretty good for you. Yeah, it felt pretty good, but... Um uh, it was really difficult to finish him off yeah. because Protoss <laughs> has so many good defensive tools. Uh, I just kept getting force fielded forever. And then there was the Photon Overcharge. It's like, if you want to kill Protoss, there's 12 layers of defense that you need to break. <laughs> Even if you kind of won the game by a successful opening, it's yeah. still... It's, it's such a hassle to close it out. And um, uh, I was very impressed by his defense, in, uh, you know, given the position that I put him in early on. And that scared me a little bit for the second map. But... Uh, after that, uh, after that first map, his opening in the second game didn't seem as refined as in the first one. Right on. I mean, gentlemen, you you can ask him some great questions too. But after hearing that, I can't help but think uh, playing against Protoss when you're in the lead is like peeling an onion. It's like go through layer after layer. You have tears yeah, yeah. coming down your cheeks, <laughs> but you're like, I still gotta get through it. And like eventually you chop up the onion, but you're, yeah, you just got tears like all over your face. At least That's when like, you play against like, Terran, at least when you play against Terran, you can really feel it. Like you can feel this drive inside. Like yeah, I'm really close to closing things out and. Uh, even then, you have the muta advantage coming over time, but versus Protoss, it's just it just keeps coming, you yeah. know? It's more force fields, more force fields, and then the high templars come, and then the storm comes, and the onion just intensifies. You, know? and you, Man, just, you just I've, cry. I've been in StarCraft, what, for five years or more now, StarCraft 2, and not even the great Artosis could have made that kind of comparison. <laughs> William Chobra <laughs> comes back to StarCraft 2 in 2015 and pulls that out. I've, I've been chopping a lot of onions during the past. My guess is that Chobra has been playing some Surge. 
versus Protoss. Yeah? Maybe, yeah. You can feel it in the pain? <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe. Maybe that's what it was. I've been watching a lot because I've been interested in picking up Zuri, but every time I pick up Zuri, I'm like, I can't do it. Too many queens, like all this, all this <laughs> back row. I'm like, I can't do it. I just like, I just, you know, I climbed, when I first got Wins yeah. I climbed ladder by simply making Marines. That's what I did. So that's, that's the level I'm at when I play. It's very different when I watch. We'll keep that there, though. We'll keep that buried for now. I'm pretty good at building Marines too, Chobra. <laughs> um, I got a question for you. So uh, not so much about that series, but I mean, you, you traveled over to Korea, what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now? Is it two weeks-ish? Uh, yeah. Almost about weeks, right? roughly, yeah. roughly two weeks ago. And you had your game against Innovation. Um, yeah. Since then, you've been practicing. I mean, did, have you felt immediate effects from that? Was it was it kind of a boost? Because I think we mentioned on here it might be a slight advantage that you've been there, especially like the time zone stuff, but more so the practice. What have you felt from being there? Uh, after after my match against Innovation, I left the uh, Spinner House, so I didn't get uh, top quality practice versus Protoss, but I played some on Korean ladder and I got some Pro Protoss practice from there. Uh, but mostly just going to Korea and meeting up with uh, all the Korean players and being in the team house environment really motivated me. Yeah. Uh, I was feeling a little bit down, you know, coming from bad result in WCS and then Homestar Cup went horribly wrong. So uh, I wasn't really feeling the game all that much and especially with the new CVP not really being that strategically interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I was feeling kind of down, but I feel like staying at Spenu and uh, in Korea in general with so many good friends just uh, yep. helps me uh, Survive the onion process. The onion process. <laughs> what is the? I mean, you, you've obviously played tens of thousands of games in Europe. You played quite a lot in Korea, but not for a while. What was the difference with you when you felt it over there? The Protoss players over there, because I mean, you've got the little boy, you've got the Petri de Drogo in Europe. Did you feel any big differences between the guys over there, the Terrans, the Zergs, the Protosses in Korea? Um, is there a big difference? Can you really feel it when you get on the ladder and start playing against these guys? It's kind of like all the Protosses are the same. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, onions are pretty much the same. That's true. I mean, you got you to feel thing, them man. no matter what. They like, always make you cry. Right. <laughs> no, no disrespect, but there's a lot of varieties. So, you know, sometimes the name doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Different Protoss players can bring out so much different. Um, so it's mostly in the control, I guess. But uh, in my limited ex experience on the ladder, I didn't really get to... Uh, form an identity of the yeah. Korean processes like so that. So you could have been playing against a Lobo or somebody while you are over there. Could have kind of felt the same. Yeah, and there were some cheesers too. I, I think the skill level of the Protoss players in uh, Korea and Europe when it comes to PVC, it's it's not all that different. It's uh, pr um, Korean Protosses maybe a little bit more refined in the early game. Yeah. But besides that, I, I don't think there's a big difference. I guess Zerg vs. Zerg can kind of be similar too. I, I don't know if there's a big difference there for you. No, stylistically, uh, Korean server Zerg versus Zerg games play out quite differently. Yeah? Much more oh. aggressive, I would say. And uh, then do you, do you really feel it against the Terran plays, I guess, the bigger difference, no? Against how, there's, how good they are. Their mechanics and splits are yeah. a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. But uh, honestly, the, uh, the Korean server difference uh, is there. But it's mostly that uh, there's more of the high-level players active th uh, throughout the day. So it's more mm. convenient as a full-time player or someone who plays a lot to play on the Korean server. Whereas in Europe, some of these top-level players might go outside or, you know, they might be sleeping. And uh, then the level is not the same. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so it's just a small difference in the average skill level. All right. I mean, you're just smiling. Are you very? Are you just Pink happy? Pink does nothing but <laughs> smile. That's what he's here That's for. That's true. Smile. Only I'm, on camera, though. I'm just kind of giggling. You know, all my questions are pretty much what we've already talked about. We saw you with that look on your face after the first game, and it's like, is there a sigh of relief? You're just looking like, <laughs> man, <laughs> that was so hard to peel that onion. Like, like we could see it on your face. So, how are you feeling going into the next series? Is that a big confidence boost now, man? Not really, man. I'm just doing this stupid all ends. And, uh, <laughs> it's not my thing. Like, if I could switch to being a chess pro, I would like I would do it right now. If I could keep the same friends in the environment and everything, I would just do it right now. A chess player. But I mean, all I do is just it's make drones, and chess. make drones, and make units, and then I start the choo-choo train. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not very interesting to me. Like, even Swarmus, even if it took 50 minutes, it was still more strategically complex, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah fair yeah. point. So, I, I got one last question, though. All right, so you can tell us. Come on, we're all friends here. We've been friends for a while. When you win 2-0 and you like, GG comes in, and the camera guy's like there, he's like in the booth, he's like doing this, <laughs> is it hard to not keep like from smiling or from laughing? Because I can imagine if I just beat Rain, 
I mean, maybe because it's so impossible for me to even come close, maybe that's why I would smile. But did you ever have that as a pro gamer when you're there? Like, don't smile, don't smile, like, you bite your tongue uh, or something? It's, it's just the effects of the onion. It's just so strong, so I, I cannot smile. It's, it's, more, it's more like, yeah, the Protoss player made some mistakes, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, well, congratulations once again. You did win 2-0. A couple more onions in your way, but maybe you can finish that gourmet dish by the end. Maybe we'll see you on that final stage on Sunday. We all look forward to your next match in the winner's match. But for now, we're going to take a quick break, everyone. If you missed uh, the matches, hopefully you did it. Hopefully all you fans out there, you stayed up. But if you missed it, feel free to go over to plays.tv. You'll be able to catch some of the sweet highlights from Snoot taking down Rain 2-0. And we'll be back after this.